Hey guys, I hope you have a great season so far. In this video I want to talk about unique items and how you can easily farm those, especially early on in the game. So we have for example this powerful unique items uh, from the new Spiritbound class. We have here the both helmets and also the Rod of Kepeleke, which is a very powerful item, which is needed for uh, the most broken build right now that you can play. I also have it here with a max roll and greater FX for chance for core skills to hit, uh, hit twice. So I was kind of lucky here. And also I'm wearing right now the Zepa Sontek, another unique quarter staff, which is also needed for a very powerful and fun build. Um, I'm playing right now with the Thunder Spike Evade Spam Spiritborn, or also you could call it the Storm Feather Spiritborn. You can also find this build on my channel. Um, but the idea here is I got all of these uniques basically from one source, uh, one source pretty early on in the game. And this is actually from the Curiosity Vendor. So I don't know, but I didn't see many people talking about this. I think it's a very useful trick and you just need to be aware of it. But let's recap quickly how the meta for Unix was before Season 6. So usually you would go farm those different bosses and you can still do that as well. So you have, for example, the uh, Grigoire boss, which you can find here below, Cat Bardu. Then we have something like the Duriel boss, which you can find below Geakul. Or we have Varshan, which is just next to the Tree of Whispers. So this was the meta actually before season six you would just uh you would farm first the boss materials and then you would summon these different bosses maybe do some boss rotations in the group to be more effective and then you would just farm this uniques but in season six with festival of hatred they have reworked the curiosity vendor quite a bit so right now it is quite easy to also gamble some of these powerful uniques from the curiosity vendor uh, so you will need, uh, need to trade your obols and and the number one source for obols is the pit, actually. So the pit is something you would do anyways, because you want to level up your glyphs. So you can see here I'm leveling all of my glyphs I have in my Paragon board. This is by far the most important task that you will do in the end game in order to become more powerful. And you also get a lot of XP in order to level up your Paragons. So the pit is anyways uh, something you will do in the end game uh, a lot. And you will also farm these obols there. And then with the obols you can just trade them um, for these curiosities here. But before you do that, another important tip is you can open your seasonal journey and especially the season blessings here and here's a very important uh, blessing which is just in the middle of the screen so here you can see we can boost the chance of receiving a second item when purchasing from the uh, curiosity vendor so in that case right before i will turn all of my obols into some unique items i will just open the seasonal blessings i will reallocate all of my points here so i don't need this points right now for example and I will just put them in um, and now I have a 40% chance boost to receive a second item and now now I will just start vendoring uh, or turning uh, turning my obols into uniques and let's test how quickly this can work so I'm just starting buying the squatter stuff here and you can see already I got one rot of kepeleke and if I will repeat this I'm pretty sure that I will find another one pretty soon so let's see if we got one, another one here. Okay, we got at least one, another uh, one more. There's a Pasontek quarter staff, which I already have. Okay, but you got an idea. So it's pretty, you have pretty high chance and odds to um, get some powerful uniques this way. And it's also, it doesn't take too long to farm actually this obols here with the pit. Um, and now I also want to give you some further tricks and insights so what you also can do you can check the total amount of uniques each class has so for example here we have the spiritborn unique categories and you can see the spiritborn has for example only three unique uh, unique weapons and all of them are quarter staffs so for that reason it's a very good idea to start vendoring the quarter staffs because the odds are pretty high that you will get one of these unique weapons but this depends a little bit so like i mentioned you have different item categories with each, each class so for example the uh, spirit bone also has a lot of rings um, so a lot of unique rings so we can actually count we have this ring number one 
Then we have here ring number two, ring number three, number four, number five, and number six. So we have six different unique rings in the class. So what this means is the odds of getting a unique ring are also pretty high, but you will have uh, random items here. So you cannot target farm one specific ring. So I would say if you need one specific ring, so for example, we have this ring of Midnight Sun, which is also very important for most spirit bond builds, just because you will restore your vigor with this ring. Um, then it's a bad idea to target farm this one. So for example, you can see here, you can find this ring at Grigoire, for example. And I, I'm pretty sure it also drops somewhere else, but especially Grigoire has a chance to drop this ring. And also Grigoire, which again you can find here at the Hall of the Penitent, down below Cat Bardu. Um, it has a pretty high odd to drop this ring as well, because also the bosses have pretty small pools uh, in Season 6, so I think they each have about four different unique items that they can drop. So the odds are pretty high that you will get one of these Rings of the Midnight Sun. So I think for that reason it's a better idea to just farm some bosses. I think Living Steel is not too hard to get also. Um, but something like um, this unique weapons with quarter staffs, like I mentioned, this is a pretty good idea to use the Curious Tea Vendor, just because you have a very small pool and it's very likely that you will get one of those. And the same goes to the helmets, unique helmets. So the Spirit Bone class also has only two unique helmets, the Harmony of Ebiwaka and the Loyalty's Mantle. So also these two are pretty easy to get with the vendor here and uh, it's a very great paw boost in the early game. So if you can equip, for example, this Harmony of Ebiwaka early on, then you will get a significant damage bonus to your character and you will just feel yeah, a significant power increase early on. So this will just help you with your early torment tiers. So yeah, I think this is a pretty useful tip just in case you weren't aware of it. That is a pretty good source right now to just gamble some unique items here. And yeah, I hope this one helped you and I hope you will uh, turn on in some other guides in the future. I will make a lot of spirit guides and rogue guides on this channel as usual. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and have a nice day and bye bye.